If you haven't ever spent that many hours sat on a bike saddle, you could very well be wondering how on earth a Tour de France rider spends five hours a day, every day, sat on that. Well, let me tell you, it's not because they have strange backsides, but there is an awful lot of design and engineering that goes into a modern saddle. So as you can see, we've come to Ineos Grenadiers to help to explain. So they use saddles made by Italian brand Physique. The two have actually had a partnership now since 2011. So it's fair to say, I think, that the riders are more than content with what they have to sit on. Plus, in the last 11 years, saddle technology has evolved a huge amount. So we'll start with this one, which is a more traditional saddle. It's called the Arione. This is actually 20 years old, and it's the saddle of choice for former winner and now Tour de France veteran, Geraint Thomas. And the first thing you'll notice is there's not much padding on this, and that's because Tour de France rider doesn't want much padding. They want a firmer saddle because it gives you better power transfer. The riders are after support, not sponge but you'll also find very importantly that when the shape of the saddle is right you don't need that much padding because your sit bones get the support they need and your soft tissue is spared any excess pressure so you get both support and also comfort increasingly though more and more riders are starting to use saddles that have cutouts in for even more pressure relief so this one is called the vento argo and you can see it looks really different it's a little bit wider so that you get more support on your sit bones but there's also of course this big pressure relief channel down the middle and lastly you'll notice it's a lot shorter than the old arione and that is because it's tailored for riders that are using a really aggressive aerodynamic hunched forward position so they can get the saddle further forward. And in fact, if you look at time trial bikes, you'll see that the saddles there are even shorter than these ones because the positions the riders are in are even more extreme. <music> Lastly, another super cool and recent development has been the introduction of 3D printed saddles. So here is one, an adaptive saddle it's called. And you can see when you look closely, the padding comprises this 3D lattice structure whose characteristics can be tailored for different areas of the saddle. So you can get more support in some areas and then softer padding in other areas. Now, unfortunately, the only Ineos rider who was using an adaptive saddle for the Tour de France was Mikhail Kwiatkowski, who unfortunately wasn't able to take the start line. Now, it's also worth noting as well that whilst the riders have their perfect saddles, they also have a slightly different experience of cycling. Because they put more power through the pedals, they then correspondingly put less weight through their backsides, so there's simply less pressure on them. And then also, because the positions on the bike are so stretched out, they'll typically be putting more weight through their hands than your average leisure rider. And then finally, you'll also notice that on their saddles, they've got these marks on all of them, and that's to help get the saddle in exactly the right position for the rider, because bike fit also plays a key part. And of course, they do have some padding as well in their cycling shorts, but importantly, that's less about padding and more about reducing chafing, which is another occupational hazard of being a Tour de France rider. And hey, some of them might have weird backsides. I can't vouch for all of them, I guess. Now, I've been chatting to the team mechanics, trying to get a feel for exactly what riders are using here at the Tour de France. And they tell me that Geraint clearly is using the Arione, so too is Luke Rowe, so too is Filippo Ganna, so too is Adam Yates. And then the other riders, oh, Pidcock is using Antares R1. But interestingly, whilst the tour riders have gravitated towards the more traditional saddles, they said that the other team riders are using the newer design. So a load more guys on adaptive, as I mentioned, Kwiatkowski, and then also that new Vento Argo. But the main thing they say is that the riders try not to change saddles mid-season. And in fact, some are still clinging on to saddles that have been discontinued in order not to break that habit of a lifetime. And one thing as well that the tour riders, in fact, any professional cyclist that's certainly sponsored by certain saddle manufacturers gets access to is pressure mapping testing. So effectively you get a special saddle and 
it can tell you where the pressure points are when you're sat on it. And so through that, you can then try different saddles out and therefore find the one that fits you the best. So it's not just about how it feels, but you can also see quantifiable data to see where those pressure points are. I tell you what, I've never, ever, ever fortunately struggled with being uncomfortable on saddles, but I do quite fancy giving that a go. 3D map of your bum while cycling. Who wouldn't want that? Anyway, please, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. Get involved in the comments section as well. Saddles are a personal choice. Be very interested to read what you have found works for you. Lastly, do make sure you subscribe as well. Hit that bell icon. We've got loads more cool Tour de France content coming up for you.